Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I don't know what time it is where you are, but either way, I hope you're having a great day. As you can probably guess from the information around on this stream, my name, once I adjust my camera, is Brandon, and I am the host of the Dev Chatter live stream. If you are new here, welcome to the stream. I hope that you find us to be a welcoming community. We strive to be one. Uh, so feel free to ask questions, uh, get involved, make suggestions. Uh, however you want to get involved in the stream, as long as it's friendly and nice, you are welcome to do so. Uh, we are a, uh, uh, I said a, but an awesome community of developers of, uh, I guess, a wide distribution of people from around the world. And uh, we are... I guess anchored by this uh, live stream in that this is the place where most of us meet uh, most frequently. Am I muted? Can you not hear me? It's telling me that I'm not muted. It's sending out audio. I don't think I'm muted. It says I'm not muted. Okay, so Wheatlaw says he can hear me. Uh, so anyway, um, the uh, community also has a few other ways that we gather together for communication, and that does include our Discord as well as uh, our GitHub, where we do have some people that have collaborated with us on some of our projects. Uh, our Discord has literally hundreds of developers, not like super active and chatty, so it won't like blow up your notifications if you join it, but there are some nice uh, discussions that you can have in there. Wheatlol is attempting to troll me at the beginning of my stream by changing all of these lights to black, so I'll think that maybe my overlay isn't working, but I know that it is Wheatlol, so good try. Uh, I'll switch it back to lime. Uh, so you can actually type in any color you want, and those lights that just came on uh, will change to whatever color you want. Uh, you can use hex codes, named colors, things like that. Uh, we've done that kind of stuff on some of our stream that are... Uh, you can find the archives of all of our old episodes on YouTube, including the one where we built that, uh, that does the color changing. Um, it's kind of neat. Uh, it's actually a system tray only application that we built as a standalone bot because we thought it would be interesting to do because uh, then I could do a single episode where we built a chat bot from scratch that the whole point of is that it uh, is just a system tray only thing. Uh, word of warning, if you do check out the video on that, check the comments below the video because some people did chime in with the stuff I was missing when I made it uh, and they answered one of the questions I had while doing it and then additionally uh, someone chimed in with the updated version because the SDK for uh, uh, the framework changed when the version's updated. So now that we're on version 3.1 also, funny enough, I had to make the exact same change that uh, was suggested to me in the video. Because uh, maybe a couple of months after we recorded it, uh, <laughs> Microsoft released the next version, and they changed the name and structure of... Um, essentially the context menu that comes up when you click on the system tray icon. Anyway, um, other reasons to check out our YouTube channel if you haven't taken a look is that I have a series that I occasionally add videos for on there called Dev Chatter Basics, which is where I take uh, a general like foundational programming concept, uh, mainly focused on C Sharp, and I discuss essentially what information about that. So, for example, if you don't know much about Link in C-sharp, we have a video about Link. If you don't really know how enums work, we have a video that covers all the basics of enums. Uh, that being said, uh, for all the basic stuff that I'm doing, uh, I'm either going to do part twos that dive more deeply into those, or we're going to make a series that is not basics and goes into either the intermediate and or advanced um, concepts of these things, but they're great refreshers uh, for anyone that wants to go back over some of the like programming concepts that uh, you want to check out there. Um, other stuff that I should mention, I guess I'll toss a link to my Twitter in there because why not? Uh, there are links to stuff down below uh, as well. Okay, so people that are coming in and uh, are expecting a Saturday stream because, well, we, we're going to have a Saturday stream first off, uh, but what I mean is... Uh, for the past, uh, I don't even know how many months, 11 months or so, uh, I've been 
almost exclusively doing my stream on Saturdays. And that is going to start to change as my schedule has cleared up a little bit, so I should be able to do weekday streams again. Specifically, the problem that really hit is not just that my schedule got too busy, it's that it was specifically busy right at the time when I wanted to stream. And it's tough for me to stream at other times during the day. So uh, specifically, the times when I stream are when I had stuff going on. So now I should be able to do these streams more often, so yay. Um, we're going to be doing those. So I actually did a Thursday stream uh, and I believe I've got the recording of that scheduled to go live on YouTube tomorrow, but also the v the video and the highlight of the video uh, are already live on Twitch, so you can find that in the videos section somewhere. They might have moved it. I don't uh, Somewhere in here, there's a link to videos. And uh, Voight, yes, I am back. And yes, Rambling Geek, it is tough to fit in all the stuff that we want to do. Uh, the slot machine, um, it turned out pretty well. Let's, uh, here. Slots should be there. So on Thursday, we built this little slots game. Uh, if anyone wants to check that out. there. Uh, all it does is take some of your coins and sometimes give you coins back. Sometimes. Uh, we did not build that feature yet, Wheat Lol. We might come back to that. I wanted to do a different one today. So uh, we're not going to con continue slots, but we'll go back to uh, our various coin-based games. Uh, for the Dev Chatter Arcade. Uh, but today I wanted to do something different. And you still get to see... Oh, yes. Yes. Don't worry, Wheatlaw. We'll do that feature where we let people actually bet coins. I'm going to have to change a lot of how we did the original structure to allow people to, to place their specific bet. Because payouts are going to need to be thought of as um, multiples of the amount bet. So rather than static amounts, because uh, I don't want to take static amounts and multiply based on that. I want to, I guess, I guess we technically could if we said, here's the base and then, you know, how far off from it is the base and, you know, proportionally scaling the payouts. But no, no, no. <laughs> I'd rather not go that route. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and take a look. So command for today. I want to do something a little weird, and I'm not sure the approach I should take. So I want to build a command that allows chat to... How to say this? Uh, it's going to be similar to this command. So this is our hype command. Uh, which we also have a couple of other commands. I want to do something kind of like this, but a little bit different today. Um, wow, wow, Voight. Wow, thanks. Appreciate that. What what a what a what a heartfelt comment. <laughs> uh, so we yes we we are back. We're going to be doing some good stuff. Um, so I want to do something kind of like our hype command. But I want to take a different approach. Um, it's not going to be hype. We're going to do something else. So the, the elements that are, that are obviously in here, uh, this is going to be triggered by SignalR. Uh, the command itself is going to connect to Twitch using C Sharp, and we're going to use JavaScript to display it. So nice range of, uh, I guess, stuff getting, getting in this one. Uh, where would be a good place to start testing the JavaScript? Kind of feel like I should just make a um, a basic web app, like a Scratch web app somewhere, and just start building it, and then pull the code out of there and move it over because a Scratch website would be a little bit faster to work with. Plus, I could then write it in VS Code and not worry about it. So let's do that. There we go. Done. Uh, hang on one second, everyone. I want to do a thing. I need to do something. There we go. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, height, but a little different. Yeah, exactly. Alberto, greetings and welcome. Uh, you're very happy with VS Code with OmniSharp. It was tough to switch to at the start, but you really don't miss the bloat. Yeah. So one of the things I will always... Uh, Visual Studio is both a positive and negative of working in .NET and C Sharp, uh, and, and I include .NET Core in that. The tooling for C Sharp has hands down been some of the best tooling that has ever been created for a programming language. Like, no, I, I don't think that you can easily debate that. The amount of awesome stuff that it can do, the amount of things that you can do is amazing. At the same time, the amount of bloat in Visual Studio and the amount that it slows down is ridiculous. Um, just the I, I mean, e even down to just what it does with IntelliSense and things like that is is truly phenomenal. The kinds of things that it can figure out are, are really, really impressive. Uh, the fact, like, uh, we we can joke about how, like, to be honest, I've I've yelled about Visual Studio as much as anybody. <laughs> like, I complain about Visual Studio all the time. There's a bunch of terrible stuff in it, but at the same time, wow does it do some amazing stuff okay so let's go ahead and uh not net new which thingy do i want that well, would be easy for just having a static page running web app i don't want that i don't need react or anything like that do I just want to do like a, uh, I just need static pages. So I guess I'll just do an, I guess I could just do an empty web project and just make sure that it has static pages. So we'll do .NET new web. Uh, yeah, so, uh, no, I did not say best. I said one of, and, and you're absolutely correct. Um, but in, keep in mind that I run Resharper, I run Resharper when I'm in Visual Studio, uh, and I've also run Writer. So the cool thing is that, um, I will agree with you. IntelliJ is a fantastic way to write Java. The difference is that Visual Studio has more than just like one answer to that because you could also be running visual studio with code rush if that's the the style you prefer uh so keep in mind that um in the company that makes intellij also makes tooling for c sharp uh so they they do both and the funny thing is i actually use the intellij keyboard shortcuts uh when i use resharper in c sharp so did not say best did not say better than all the others i said one of it's clearly one of the best I'm certain that we could clip that and check that I did say one of. Because I certainly don't mean that it is the best. But it is hands down one of the best. There is no way that you can make a case that uh, C Sharp's tooling is not uh, one of the best out there. I, I would find that hard to believe. IntelliJ and Writer both on a daily basis, but there's a huge uh, gap between how the Java toolings work compared to the C-sharp tooling. Yeah, so the difference between IntelliJ and Writer is the fact that one has been getting development for over a decade and the other hasn't. <laughs> but yes. Yes, exactly. In IntelliJ also fantastic. Yes, 100% agree. Uh... Cryophonic, uh, I'm guessing. Welcome. Doing pretty well. And uh, thank you for that follow, Mr. Byte. Much appreciated. Uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, how much does this actually give us? This is just doing one of these. Um, you know what? Let's Let's reset this. Uh, I'm going to reset this. Do, 
Uh, we'll do that. Greetings and welcome, s &B. Uh, What kind of stuff you need besides IntelliSense and a debugger, Wheatlaw? Oh, yeah, so some people do absolutely like Rider better than VS or VS Code. Uh, Java is a simpler language for doing Intel IntelliSense, and that's why it works so great. Yeah, in some ways. Um, Java and C-sharp are very similar, but also very different languages. They have a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences. Greetings, s &B, welcome. Um, and yes, it, it, uh, in IntelliSense is a lot of stuff. So, and debugging, very different as well between the various languages. Either way, um, let's jump on in here. Uh, do we have statics turned on? Static files, good. Oh yes, of course we do, because we have a CS CSS and a JS right in here. So we had to have those. Uh, in the root, let's just put a page. So we're going to put in a new file that'll just be... Um, we'll make an HTML file, funny enough. Um, <sighs> Do -do -do. Title Hello Okay Let's see if that works Uh, IntelliSense is a general term for a variety of code editing features, including code completion, parameter info, quick info, and member lists. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right, Wheelow. Uh, wherever that came from. And yes, I would, I would agree. There is a nice set of those that, uh, definitely fall into that same category. Alright, so let's go to our local host, uh, 5,000. Uh, so it took me here, and let's say, what did I call it? Firework? Or did I call it fireworks? I called it firework. Okay, so there it is. Uh, okay, so what do we want to create in here? I can make a canvas. Uh, what? Uh... by 1080 which yes I know in the browser is going to exceed that size okay I have a bit of scrolling that's actually kind of surprising uh Can I give it a background color uh, of red? Okay, so it does have some margins on the side, that's why. Margins are padding. Version zero, uh, height, width, will that get him or did I not get it? No, nope, I still didn't get it. Derp. Uh,
<laughs> Thank you. Uh, what is this? What is going on? What is the chat? Can we just do IntelliSense? Uh, one of the great things about Rider Web, uh, true when I need to search on Google how to do something in Rider Alpha and search for how to do it in IntelliJ. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, yep. Uh, I should go just create a style sheet, shouldn't I? What did they put in the default one? Did they actually put that in there? Nope, they didn't. Okay. Uh, will that nuke it? There we go. Completely red, filled perfectly. Good, yay. Good enough. Thanks, Miha. I actually like that. That is a really nice color on the stream. So if you didn't notice, Miha changed the colors of the overlay that we've got on here right now just by typing that in. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We're not keeping that inline styling because this is not our project. So creating a CSS sheet in here is not worthwhile. This is not the project we're building. This is just the project we're temporarily building this in. This is like our scratch folder. Uh, so we are going to build something that is not going to have a background that is red, um, because that's silly. Uh, let me go ahead and do that. Okay, good. Just wanted to recheck with the scroll bars that I could have a height of 1920 by 1080 and that all my adjustments worked nicely. Okay. Um, no, yeah, no, I'm not chroma keying red out or anything like that. Um, so I'm, I'm a C sharp guy, mostly not a JavaScript guy, but we're still going to be messing around in JavaScript today. It's been a while since I've messed around in JavaScript much. So that's one of the reasons why we're going to do it. Um, uh, do we want to bother with that? Or are we just going to inline? So for uh thank you for that follow by the way uh one of the reasons why we are in this scratch project is that it's a little faster and easy to do the javascript and html stuff that we are doing in here uh, and change it and make it faster than to have it in the bot that's currently running and running the chat so because the bot we're going to add this feature to is literally the bot for this chat if i were to want to make changes and updates and things like that I would potentially be, uh, you know, making changes to that and restarting the bot every once in a while if I actually needed to do like full rebuilds of stuff. And so to avoid that and to be able to keep the bot active, I'm just working in a separate project. So that's why we're over here in this separate project is so that we can build it over here and then just shift all the pieces over. So we'll take all the code we wrote and just, you know, copy it over into our bot when we're done. Uh, so when we do that, we can take anything that we put in line styling and just make a class for it. Anything that we put in line, like if I, I could shove JavaScript directly into this HTML file and I won't care because what I'm going to do when I pull it into the other project is say, oh, you're inside a style tag. Cool. You're, you're your own you're, you're, style tag. You're inside a script tag. You're going to go ahead and be your own JS file. Done. <laughs> like, uh, so I wouldn't have to worry about that. Um, because this is not supposed to be like a whole app. This is like a single feature that's going to go into another app. Uh, so if I decide to break it out into the classes now, cool, uh, into the different JS files now, cool. If I don't, that doesn't bug me either. Okay, so what do we want to build? Uh, I actually might start with this. So, oh, what do we want to call it? So I want to make fireworks. I want to make fireworks. How am I going to make fireworks? I could do... I guess I just could, could call this fi folder fireworks. Uh, and then we are going to add in a new file of, uh, that will be firework.js. And what do they explode off? Like a particle? Particle, a firework and a particle? Uh, yes, we're going to use SignalR. So we use SignalR for all of our stuff that connects to any of our overlays. Um, uh, 
Let me pull up our... Actually, I don't need our chatbot over here, do I? That's our chatbot. It doesn't need to be on there. Uh, let's see. We are going to call it using that. So SignalR is going to pass down to there. When we call it, we are going to end up calling something that is going to be a... Um, we're going to call some kind of animation uh, that we're going to trigger based on this. So let's start by creating a firework. And we won't worry about the particle yet, but we have the file for it. So... <sighs> There are like 20 different ways that we can, at least, that we can create this stuff in uh, uh, the JavaScript side. Uh, and I guess it doesn't really matter how we do it. Um, I call this firework. So we will go with uh, this, I guess, because why not? Uh, and that, and that's how we do it. If I want it to automatically call itself, if I'm remembering correctly. So it runs the function immediately upon this and assigns the result to firework. Okay. Um, so I need to make sure that this returns an object that is useful so i will say oh do i go with guy guy's preferred way because he's often a guest on here we could do we could do uh the two spaces that some people prefer now what i won't what i won't stand for is that uh what do we want to call this Yes. <laughs> I think you want the last set of double parens after the closing parens before the semicolon. After the closing parens before the semicolon. Do I? Maybe. I guess I guess we'll find out. And yes, pink actually worked pretty well. There, there are a few colors that don't work well on here. Uh, and the nice thing is you can actually... Uh, yeah, hot pink will work too. Uh, but you can also do hex colors. Uh, TBD Gamer, welcome. Greetings. See? So you can, you can do hex colors also. Transparency doesn't work. Uh, I did not... I do not bring in alpha because that's just... We don't really need it. You get the full range of colors even without considering alphas. So, but yes, you you can make black and 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 potentially if you do it at the right time, you can. And I don't notice. You can make me think that uh, that I did not notice the. Um, um, you can make me think that uh, that the overlay is broken if you if you actually pull it off nicely. People have done it. They have tricked me before. Okay, um, we need to have a couple of things in here. Um, what do we want? Uh, yeah, so the way that the way that they the, the people trick me is they set it to black, and if I'm not paying attention, and I just think, wait, wait, where's the I can I can potentially be fooled into thinking that something happened. Anyway, uh, no, not not RBG, uh, no, no RGB, just uh, just hex. So if you wanted to do if you wanted to do white, you could just type in white also. Um, but then you can also you could have done the hex color for it as well, like that. And I just nuked the whatever ABC is. Uh, you should be able to do three-digit colors, too, but this one's going to look awful. I don't remember what it is. Oh, no, no, that's the one that's okay. It's this one that looks terrible. That's the one that looks terrible, I think. Although that's actually not that bad in this. In this, It looks terrible on a full screen. That's that's where it's going to look bad. 
Uh, okay, so we're gonna let uh, set color equal ASCII. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Uh, I I was watching Smart ASCII's stream yesterday. Let's do a function that is uh, gonna take in the color that you want to set. Oh, derp. <laughs> uh, I wasn't even looking where I was writing my code. All right, so we're going to paste that in. Why did you want to bump it up like that, dude? Uh, whoops. How do they do this in this? There we go. Set color is going to do something, and we want to return. Set color. All right, so set color is going to be one of the methods on the object that we create one of our firework objects. Um, oh, you brought uh, you you brought me some. Great, thanks, buddy. Is it all the stuff that is it all the ammo that you wasted on Steve yesterday? The color overlay of part of the dev chatter botters. This is a separate project. Miha, the colors that you're changing right now is a separate project. Um, it was a just a simple little project that we created. It was like a one-day stream that we did. You can find uh, information about it. Uh, there's actually it's one of it's in our YouTube channel. Uh, the video that we did to create that. Um, though word of warning, uh, .NET Core has changed some of the uh, stuff that you need in order to make it work. So read the comments down below. There was one question that I wasn't sure about how to dispose of something. Someone did answer that question for me. Uh, and then the other thing that is relevant in there is that they changed the name of the context menu that pops up when you right click the system tray icon. So this is actually run as a system tray only application. So when you start it, it just immediately goes to the system tray and you don't even worry about it. It's just running there. Um, so, yep. Uh, certainly did not as far as I know. Um, Yep, but you can go check that out. Uh, and it's uh, just a standalone piece. Uh, and you just provide, basically the, the whole point of the application is it just sends the message to uh, a, a web page. It just says, hey, here's the color that the person set. Uh, so then you just put some JavaScript in there that says, okay, yeah, whatever, whatever you were doing on this page, just update the color. So I just have this little JavaScript animation that's doing this, and then I just change what color it's using. So that's all we did for that. Let me make that yellow. Okay, uh, so set the color. Uh, okay. A shoot. A shoot. Yeah, hey, yeah, totally broke. Thanks for the bits, by the way. Uh, I do not think it broke. Uh, I, you, you gotta, you gotta, it takes a little bit more luck and effort than that to, to trick me into thinking that it worked. Uh, okay, so what do we want to have in here? We want to have, um, uh, yeah, I, I got that. <laughs> uh, well, let's create a couple of variables. So first off, um, the firework itself needs to have a color. I guess if you haven't chosen a color, we'll go, um, I guess we'll, we'll force you to pick a color. You have to choose some kind of a color. So we'll, we'll just say that you're going to do it. Um, let's do just for inconsistency's sake, because it's fun. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll say we're going to have a can canvas and a context that are going to get passed to us. And we're going to say the canvas, the context, because I'm going to create up here, let canvas, let context. And yes, I like one lining them like that. Uh, canvas is going to equal the canvas. and. Uh, Con uh, context is going to equal the context. Yay! Okay, so we now have a way to give this object the thing it's going to render on. Yes, I know that we wouldn't have to do it that way, but we are. 
Uh, Surly Dev, you can see me? That's wonderful. Uh, let's see. Um, so... The last thing that I think that we need... So, well, you know what? Here, rather than a set color, we'll just have you pass in the color. When you initialize this, you tell me what the canvas is and what the color is. Actually, I'm going to call it the color, just so that there's no naming confusion there. So we're going to say the color. So the, the, the canvas, the context, the color are going to get passed in on a knit, and then that's going to set those starting values. And we'll just make that in it. And then I want to create render. So let's create a function just called render. And I don't think render is going to do anything. Uh, C Films, greetings, welcome. I am doing well, and I'm glad to hear that you are also. Uh, okay, so when we render this, what do we want to do? Um, and are we going to have more than one of these? I think... I think this needs to have its collection of particles. So we'll we'll render a firework and it will have an array of particles. Uh Yes. <laughs> is the answer to that question. Uh Yes, there there was definitely an issue there. Okay, so that'll be the particles. Uh wait, didn't um so I'm doing both JavaScript and C-sharp, uh, and you're right. Let me change that description. Uh, the So the command is in C-sharp, but we're doing more than just that command. Um, Griffin, you made it! Welcome! Greetings! You did make it to a stream. Congratulations, it's been a while. Uh, welcome to the stream. Okay, so here's my thinking. Um, if we're doing one firework at a time, I could clear the whole canvas. But I think I want to have more than one firework at a time. So that means that I cannot clear this canvas at the beginning of this. So I must assume, assume empty canvas. Um, and then what I want to do is uh, the firework has to have a position right now. And the particles... Uh, or or it's got particles. Or the particle and the firework are the same thing, and it has a single particle to begin with. And the single particle renders. So maybe what we do is we say particles for each. And then inside of this, we do a function that... I guess I could arrow function this. Uh, do I care about the... Do I care about the index? I'll have it just in case I do. Um, so we want to do particle... Okay, so it's gonna it'll maintain its own velocity. Has own velocity. 
So it'll update based on its own velocity. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to make a fireworks animation from scratch. Uh, C films, you do HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, and database development. That's fun. Uh, that, yeah, there. So uh, we are doing some JavaScript and C sharp right now. So uh, I'm betting that you, with a PHP background, you'll still basically understand pretty much everything we're doing uh, when we get into the C sharp side of things. Uh, so basically, our C sharp is going to trigger this JavaScript animation to happen, which is what we're trying to build right now. Uh, and I'm just trying to flesh it out basically. Uh, for now, we're going to have one particle with velocity that we'll draw when we do the update and a render for it. So I'm going to say particle uh, dot render, and I'll pass the context to this one. The canvas to the first one because I'll need the size so that I can, you know, nuke it if it goes out. Um, or, well, stop making it animate, and context will we'll deal with some of the other ones. Uh, bald bearded builder welcome greetings um that is much harder to say i should just use your real name um but either way welcome uh schuster and c films thank you very much for those follows much appreciated uh welcome to the stream and anyone else who hasn't clicked the follow button that wants to make sure that you get notified when we go live in the future sorry for talking fast uh be sure to also hit that follow button as that is the best way to know when we start up a stream okay so You need conditionals or loops for the fireworks? Yes, yeah, so C films inside. Um, uh, so I've got a loop here that's going to tell the particle to update its position, and it is also going to tell the particle to render. Um, so. One, two. I need to look something up in the JavaScript documentation. JavaScript docs splice. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Splice that. For one should remove... Uh, If you don't pass something in, it removes it, though, right? Here, let's run this code, and if I do that... Yes, okay, cool. Sorry, just confirmation that I'm saying about something. Um, if, uh, let's say, particle... Done, uh, is done. Then we will say particle dot splice and we will go I1. So we're going to say splice at index I, which remember for our for our for each loop that we're doing for the for each, we have the index as I, but we also have the element. So we're going to splice from the index of the one we're working on and essentially splice it out uh, when we do that. Uh, and that, that should do that. Uh, yes, you. <laughs> I, I do admit, you, you, do not, you do not often catch my stream, so I'm really glad you're here. It's been a while. Uh, that being said, it's partially because I've only been streaming on weekends uh, for like the past uh, almost a year. Uh, so it was last uh, August that my schedule changed and I started doing weekend only streams. Uh, so I am glad that I have started doing weekday streams again. So if you don't know, I have not updated my schedule everywhere yet. So if it doesn't list this everywhere, that's okay. Uh, but my plan is to start streaming on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays again. Uh, I, I still have a busy schedule, but I do not specifically have stuff at the times that I like to stream. And so that means I should be able to start streaming again. Uh, so, uh, we're, yes, we're using vanilla JS. That is correct. Uh, we're not using any frameworks. Um, I sometimes use frameworks for stuff on the stream, uh, but I like doing a lot of vanilla JS because if you can do the vanilla JS, you can learn to use a framework. So uh, I find that it's a lot better to, to show stuff in vanilla JS, uh, because you can always just say, oh, the framework does this piece for me. Uh, but there's levels of understanding that you get from working in vanilla. 
Uh, best part of programming, coding, and developing, seeing the stuff you create actually work and do things. Uh, it is amazing to do that stuff, especially when the doing something that your, your uh, program does is enable someone to do something really cool. Uh, so um, one of the wonderful things that I like uh, is um, one of the projects we build on this stream is called Interactive 7, and it is named such because it provides chat interaction for people that are playing uh, Final Fantasy 7 on stream. So uh, it basically lets chat control their menu colors in the game while they're playing, uh, and then also has like overlays of the stats of their characters that it's displaying while they're doing that. And the overlays, by the way, change colors to match the same colors in the game. Uh, and then it also lets chat do things like affect the player's items, their equipment, their money, uh, their stats. So if you want the if you want the player to have a different set of armor or different weapons or something like that, you can just change them during the game. Uh, if they're in the middle of combat and they're fighting against someone, and you're like, oh, that'd be funny if their character fell asleep. You can put their characters to sleep. You can poison their characters. You can uh, give them health regeneration. So you can do positives. You can do negatives. Uh, and it just gives chat the ability to just mess with the game. And yes, Swoog, I'm talking about you. Uh, and, and by that, I mean uh, Eswoogie there in chat is one of our uh, beta testers of that. So he's a Final Fantasy VII streamer. And uh, his chat loves to troll him with those. There is a command that we built called Popper. And... Uh, if you don't know that English word, because we have a lot of non-native non -native English speakers in the chat, uh, while that may be a word that is also in your language or something similar, uh, it is like a poor person would be like a translation of what that is. And so basically the command takes away all of their equipments, ma their all of their material, all of their items, and leaves them with only two coins. <laughs> so... It's basically like all the stuff that you need to survive. Yeah, you don't have any of that anymore. Pre prepare to be dead. Um, yes, exactly. Uh, it, and that's why I always tell people. It's like I build the command. Chat's the one that decided to use it. <laughs> Chat's the one that killed you, not me. Uh, I didn't do it. I didn't tell chat to do that. And I also tell people that they can set the prices high. So the idea is that uh, chat actually spends money on this. So the reason why I really like building this for them is... Um, Anybody that I know that is a full-time streamer, uh, well, the ones that I know are not the like super famous, like making millions of dollars ones. They're the ones that are like getting uh, small amounts of money from their chat here and there. So if we can build them tools that let them keep playing the games that we like watching and make it fun for the chat, why not? So quite fun. Uh, yes, Ace Flame Seer. I, yes, your your mind is blown. I, I am here. I am alive. I did not die. I am not a clone. I am not a robot. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, so we're going to splice it out if it's done. Um, uh <laughs> Swoogie, thank you much, very much for the uh, tier one sub. Yes, yes, uh, Swoogie is awesome. See uh, films, you made your own website. Yes. Uh, so, someone asked a really good Twitter question recently that I responded to. Sorry for jumping off track here, everyone. Uh, but the Twitter question was something along the lines of "What got you into programming?" And uh, I, I was like, "Well, what's a funny answer?" Like, some of the first stuff I started programming was in like the mid '90s. I started making websites. Uh, so like 95, 96, I started, yes, 90s website. I said, <laughs> my response was 90s websites are fun to build or something like that. And uh, 90s websites were really terrible and fun. Uh, everything was like like ridiculously animated craziness of, of colors and terrible, terrible things. Yes, exactly. Like GeoCities and things like that. You'd have these terrible, awful websites that we think are just laughable these days with like textured backgrounds yes blinking tags marquees all the craziness it was such good stuff and then so i consider that to be programming first off um which it is in well uh, sorry i should say i consider it to be development um i uh so that is absolutely software development uh and the and it is it is coding it is specifically coding in a markup language uh, is is what I would call that. And the interesting thing about all of that is I remember when JavaScript came out and I was like, OMG, this is like the craziest thing. And I learned JavaScript back in the 90s. Uh, the, the funny thing about that is 
that I then forgot like almost everything I knew about JavaScript because after a few years of using it and trying to make it work for anything, I tried to make it work in real stuff. And I can tell you JavaScript in the 90s and early 2000s is just about the worst experience for actually trying to support any given browser you would ever. Yes, real player too. Can't forget that. JavaScript was terrible, awful, terrible thing. Like it let us do great stuff, but man, was it a nightmare to work with. So it was not until like jQuery came out uh, in, you know, the, I guess, later 2000s, I guess the, the naughties, whatever you want to call them, that I was like, oh, yeah, let's go back in and try this again. And I was like, you solved the problem of browsers. Yes, jQuery, jQuery love. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, th I think any of us that, that programmed websites in the 90s or was even on the web in the 90s, it's like. Yeah, there's a thing there. Even early 2000s websites are kind of funny to look at today. Ah, <sighs> the 90s. What a great time on the web. Uh, 2006? Okay, I think I picked it up in 2007. I was at a conference, and uh, that's when I first heard about it. So... Funny enough, it's the conference where I met Mark Miller. So uh, if you guys know the Twitch channel Code Rushed, uh, that, that conference is also where I met Mark Miller, which is funny. Uh, yes. Oh, VB6. Good stuff, Rambling Geek. Uh, yeah, so the uh, JavaScript has gotten amazing uh, compared to what it was. I do like JavaScript a lot. I also understand all the points that people make when they hate it. Um, I can say the same thing about PHP, C Sharp, Java, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Every language has like great things about it and terrible things about it. So, <laughs> so it was a bad year. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, Steve, uh, thank you very much for that follow, by the way. Uh, I am actually really, really glad that I got to meet Mark Miller all those years ago. Uh, he has been a fantastic friend for a long time. Mark Miller really is a great guy. Uh, if you don't follow Code Rush, you should. Um, he he does some remarkable stuff over on his stream also. Uh, good stuff. Uh, good stuff. Uh, Ramblet. Um, I don't know which thing you mean. Did I really mean? I said a few things. Uh, there are no golden hammers. Uh, Derp Lord, uh, there are plenty of golden hammers. Thank you very much. We have built them, and they are in the software craftsmanship calendars of old. Um, yes, Mark is is an awesome guy. He he had he's a crazy idea man. Uh, okay, so we're gonna render these. We're gonna update. We're gonna and do these things. Uh, so after we update, now the question is: uh, Does the particle? track itself do we tell it to update when it's done we remove it you know what i kind of want to change this this is going to be the fireworks that's going to be fireworks I'm changing this. We're changing this. This is fireworks. It has fireworks. The fireworks thing has fireworks. Particles is now becoming fireworks. We're going to remove a firework. This is not a particle anymore. Whoops. This is singular. Uh, if it is done, then we are going to splice it out of the collection when it is done. Uh, do I want that to be a property or a method? I'm going to make it a, fun a function. I'm going to make it a function just in case. Uh, so we're going to say if it is done, then we are going to remove it. And update render. Uh, yeah. JavaScript is really old, C films. Yes, exactly. And that's one of the funny things is is when we think of C-sharp being a lot newer than some of the other languages that get used for this stuff, C-sharp is also a very mature language. So uh, at, you know, 
20 years old is 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 a good uh, is a good age for a language. Okay, um, so we have init and render. Let's go and make firework. Uh, I am not sure how to pronounce that, so I'm going to go with Zazzy. Zazzy, welcome. Thank you for that follow. Much appreciated. And if you have a, an awesome way for me to say that name, uh, then I would love to know about it, but hopefully Zazzy's close enough. Uh, so we're going to make a new file, file, uh, file called firework.js. And firework.js is actually going to be what we put in the fireworks, plural. This one is going to have the color. Uh, however, because of the way this works, we pass the canvas into its update and render. Cool wizard, thank you very much for that follow, much appreciated. I wonder what kind of wizard you are. I do not need to have a canvas and a context on this. This is the one that's going to have the color. Uh, excellent! It was Zazzy. Yay! I got it! <laughs> awesome! Uh, and I'm pretty sure I was supposed to say Cool Wizard, not C00L Wizard. Uh, yep, if Cheese was 20 years old, we would certainly consider it... <laughs> That's true, Derp Lord. That's true. Uh, you are a wizard of the cool kind. There you go. That does work. Uh, so this is going to have particles. So it's going to have a color and it's going to have particles. Do we want to distinguish uh, dolphin whale? Welcome. Thanks for that follow. Much appreciated. Do we want the, the particles to vary in color? Uh, let's go with base color and particle color. Base color and particle color? The color, the, oops, the color, the particle, the particle color. And this will be base color, particle color equals the particle color. What do you think is the best named programming coding language to you and why? C++. C++ is absolutely uh, one of the best named like programming languages of, of mainstream ones. Uh, I just love the humor in it because the, the like, plus plus, it's like, it's like we take C and we post increment it. And you're like, so we made it like, it's like one, one slightly more. It's just a fantastic joke of a name. And, and it's, and it's the, I guess one of the best parts about it is it's only funny to people that, that understand that it, what it even meant, but it's just, it's, it's clever. It's clever. Okay. So I said over here, assume that it's, assume an empty canvas but that's what I was thinking of writing a firework but we're not doing that anymore uh, I no longer need color here because we put it on those I no longer need that I just need the canvas so I should now be uh, rust plus plus yeah yeah so anything that does plus plus now I won't give the credit for because C, C at least is unless I unless there's one I don't know about that did it first but I think C++ was the first one to do that post increment joke on their programming language. And I think it's super clever and I'm gonna give them all the credit in the world for that because it's kind of brilliant. Okay, so I'm no longer gonna assume that the canvas is empty. Instead, what I'm going to say is context dot, uh, what is it, clear, is it clear rect? Am I remember? Is it clear rect? Uh, <laughs> IntelliSense says yes. C minus minus? Uh, yeah, you could make C minus minus if you really wanted to. Okay, so we want to start in uh, the corner at zero, zero, and go to, we have the canvas. Canvas dot, wait, it's x, it's width, right? Yes. <laughs> canvas dot uh, width, the canvas dot height. There we go. Yeah, IR programmer. 
IR programmer, everyone. Uh, C equals C plus one. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, it's it's C it's C plus equals one. Yes, C plus equals one is absolutely the programming language. <laughs> Yep, C, C plus equals 1. C equals C plus 1. Yeah, that's basically what the joke is, is that it's it's like... Yeah, so what if you took C and you made it slightly better? Then you'd have C plus plus. And then that's, that's the joke. They made the name itself part of the programming language. Okay, so we're going to clear that. We're going to say for each firework, you're going to update anything that needs updating on it, you're going to tell it to render, and if it's done, you're going to remove it, which means that update itself is going to be what takes the firework from being an individual thing to being particles. So let's do this same render that we did here over in that one, which I think I already did, didn't I? Because uh, I copy pasted it. Okay, so, um, so in this one, the canvas has already been cleared, so we're not going to do that. Um, the, this has to have a velocity, so it needs a color, the particle, and velocity. And I'm not going to do, like, correct physics where if it goes up, it's going to slow down. I'm going to keep it going at a constant speed until it explodes. We're not going to have it accelerate. We're not going to have it decelerate. None of that. It's straight line, explode. Done. Um, we're going simple for this. <laughs> we we can add all that fun stuff later if somebody really wants to. Velocity equals uh, the velocity. Okay, so we have the base color, the uh, particle color, the velocity of the particles. Okay. Uh, F sharp is C sharp's cousin. That's right. Um, C sharp also is a. Um, uh, if C sharp is like cheese and was cheese and was, uh, F sharp is C sharp. So, so for anyone that doesn't know, C sharp actually made the same joke as C plus um, plus. And if you don't, so like C plus plus made the joke first, and they used a programming term. They said plus plus to be a post a post increment on C. So it's the idea that we took C and after the, and and then we made it slightly better, right? You you made it plus one. C sharp is the same joke again, so that's why I won't give C sharp the credit, even though their joke uh, takes a different form, because sharp would be they're they're talking about music, and a flat is a slightly lower note, a sharp is a slightly higher note, so they basically said take C and make it higher level. So when you think C, but at a higher level, you'd get C sharp. And so that's the that's the joke. But it's the same kind of joke. It's like C with something extra, C a higher level, right? They both made this, like, it's a very similar joke. It's not quite, this, it's pretty much the same joke. Uh, do you happen to know what percent V command does in PowerShell? Uh, I don't off the top of my head perplexed blackout. Um, I don't know. I, I do not know enough PowerShell command stuff. Um, I, I am slightly dangerous in PowerShell, and that's about it. Uh, but I have friends that are very, very good in PowerShell, so I usually turn to them when I have PowerShell questions. So, yep, that, that's why I like having friends that are good at stuff, because then I don't have to be, I, I don't have to be good at everything. I can be good at the subset of things that I want to be good at. So we're going to make update, uh, take in the canvas render was going to take in the context for these ones. Splice, context, canvas. So when we update, we need to update the position of this object. So... We now have to start thinking the firework has a, has a position. So let x equal... I don't know where x is going to equal. Perplex Blackout, thank you very much for that follow. Much appreciated. Welcome to the stream. 
Uh, um, the X is going to equal 10, 10, 8, 10, 79 when you create it, no matter what. It's going to be like one pixel from the bottom, I guess. So it's like in. If you could only program in one coding in one language the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, that is actually a really hard question, uh, C Films. Um, can I assume that the programming language is going to be like usable in a number of places? Uh, So the reason why I would I would hesitate on that one. So I, uh, Cadmos, hey, welcome, greetings. Um, the so C sharp is a reasonable language to choose for that. JavaScript is another reasonable language to choose for that. Um, I could technically say Python would be a pretty good language to choose for that. The the point that I'm, but I, I want people to notice that the languages I'm choosing have, for the most part, the ability to run pretty much anywhere. Um, I would really only want to choose languages that could run pretty much anywhere. Uh, the fact that Blazor exists is one of the reasons why I would uh, let C Sharp into that list now, uh, because of the fact that um, you could potentially do Blazor instead of JavaScript. Because alternately, JavaScript is a great answer without Blazor being there, because you could program JavaScript to do front-end web stuff. Um, you'd pick English, yeah. <laughs> uh, the uh, the, the main point being that you want to be able to do both front-end and back-end development with it, and so you need a language that can do both, and you'd want to be able to be on various devices, so being able to be on uh, embedded devices, mobile phones, other things like that is also important. Uh, even if, like, there is no language that translates and does all of this stuff well. JavaScript is one of the better ones these days, because of the fact that Node.js and all this other stuff has come around that really has leveraged JavaScript as a language that can pretty much go anywhere. So that's why JavaScript is pr probably the top of the list. Um, I would I would probably pivot to that if I had to choose just one language forever. Um, the problem is that it's hard because... Yeah, it's really hard to pick because you don't know where technology is going. And one of the things, one of the reasons why I would bank on one of those two is the development community overall is going to keep JavaScript probably around for a long time. Microsoft is a company that's not going away, which is one, and, and its stewardship of C Sharp, whether you like the language or not, has been really, really supportive. And the fact that Microsoft has been supporting it and maintaining it and building it and developing it for so long with a reasonable amount of effort tells me they're going to keep it around for a while. It's not like a throwaway thing that they've got. So the stewardship of a language really does matter. Okay, uh, so I, I actually like that discussion topic. It's a, it's a fun one. Okay, so we're always going to start them in the middle and we'll do some velocity concept that is random. Uh, I'm not sure what I want to do for the velocity. We we could do something advanced, like have, you know, choose choose degrees and you know figure out here's the arc we want to stay in. You know, you know, like say this is the arc that we want to be in, and then we're gonna say like, okay, pick a random arc in that set, and then that's the way we're gonna shoot it. And then when it explodes into particles, they're gonna go in all directions, which we could totally do. Probably. Um, either way on that one. Uh, yeah, JavaScript and C Sharp are good choices for like a an anywhere language. If it's going to be the only thing that if it's going to be the only thing that you can use for some arbitrary reason, like if you were only going to learn one language, because keep in mind that that some people might be like, oh yeah, but this blah 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 blah. Unity, <laughs> like 
because you can also do like if you could even be a game developer and only know C sharp because Unity. So like you can go a lot of places with that language. It's it's one of the reasons why if people don't know what what they want to do, they're just like I want to learn a programming language and I don't know what I want to program. I would steer them towards JavaScript or C sharp, uh, partially because they can work for basically anything. That doesn't mean they're the best choice for what you're doing, but they're probably not a bad one for it. So there there are languages, for for example, like there are some systems that I've seen that are built with Erlang that you're like, yep, I would absolutely do that in Erlang. That is a much better choice than C-sharp. That being said, you could do it in C-sharp. It would not be as good, but you could. And that's And that's the significance is that it can like... For just choosing general purpose languages, it's nice to have one of those under your belt. Java is fairly good at that also. It, go, it goes a lot of places. Uh, and same same thing would go with like Python. And uh, if you're a big Ruby fan, you can you can Ruby a lot of places as well. Um, there, there are a lot of programming languages that can go many places today. Um, okay, so we need to set up that. So inside of update... We need to change the X and the Y. How do we want... So I said velocity. I don't know what I want to do with velocity. Velocity could be a change in X and Y if we want to go simple. It could be... Uh, but it could be the arc radius thing. But I think I'm going to go... I think I'm going to go simple and just make it a... A change in X and a change in Y. And maybe even just a static one because that's easier. Um... So I'm just going to say x plus equals velocity x and y plus equals velocity y. If I do that and we start at the bottom, it's always negative. Velocity would be negative, which that makes sense. Though Those would be the negative velocities. So yes. That that makes sense, uh, and yes, as as Schuster mentions, there's if if you're doing data science stuff, there are actually a lot of a lot of great frame uh, uh, frameworks libraries libraries uh, for doing uh, data work with Python. Uh, so I have definitely worked with some companies, uh, analytics companies and the like that do uh, a lot of stuff with Python. Uh, Cadmos, have fun in the backyard. Uh, what is this? Uh, which one of these C-based language concepts are the most important to know variables, functions, arrays, conditionals, and loops? Um, I wouldn't just call them C-based languages, because uh, variables, functions, arrays, conditionals, and loops, that's like the foundation of, of all of these things. Um, arrays, I guess, less so, because you don't technically need arrays, because arrays can literally just be, your, like, if you're thinking your variables are objects... Um, the variables, I guess, are just pointers to objects in most cases. They're, um, it depends on whether you're talking about the high-level languages or the low-level languages, I guess. Uh, and yes, as Schuster says, um, you really do need all of those. You need an understanding of, of that to really do much with a programming language. Uh, with a, with, I should say with an, uh, with an object-oriented procedural programming language, you pretty much need those kinds of things. Okay, so update is going to update those values, uh, and then we are going to check. Um, so we're going to make the changes, and then we're going to check if um, How high up do we want to be able to go? MBK, welcome. Thanks for that follow. Much appreciated. Um, so let's do an if uh, y is less than canvas dot height. And just because I like the clarity of it, let's wrap these in parens. We're going to say height divided by 
five. So we're going to be in the top 20% of the view. So essentially the top 20% of the screen, if you're in that, you should automatically explode. So let's call explode. Um, so if you're in the top 20%, uh, out of curiosity, how come you use both two and four spaces for indentation? Uh, because I was planning on using two and my editor keeps forcing four, so I'm probably going to shift to four because it's just going to do that. So, um, if I switch VS Code to the other one, it'll adjust to it, and I can run a pretty fi thing that will adjust all the spacing when I'm done anyway. Uh, this code is not going to live in this project. We're going to move it over to our chatbot project so that chat can trigger this to happen. So we're going to say if you're in the top 20%, you're going to explode. Or alternately, if uh... so, let's make this a method. We're going to say is uh, is in top fifth canvas. So let's make a quick function for is in top fifth, which I don't mind uh, hard coding that in there. So we're going to return that. Uh, and then we're going to say, or, um, is randomly, uh, uh, is randomly exploding early. Oh, you know what? Let's change this name. Let's say, is ready to explode. Yeah, is ready to explode. No, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do is ready to explode. Uh, it just means variable. Nice. It, oh, it, it is a variable. Okay. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, Conk, the, uh, the reason why is I usually do uh, four space indentation. Um, I It's just the one that I usually use. Uh, not really any, any specific reason for that. It's just... I don't have a great reason to change. So all my editors are configured to do four space indentation. Uh, we have uh, guests on the stream and my guests that program in JavaScript tend to prefer the two space indentation. So at the beginning I was like, oh yeah, let's do two space indentation. Uh, uh, today, I mean, uh, when I was starting this. And now I've just been fighting the editor the whole time and I'm going to just let it pretty fly at the end. Uh, should explode. Fantastic name. Thank you, Schuster. So we're going to go with should explode. And we're going to do the... Uh, we're not going to do this. What I'm going to do instead is... Uh, I'm going to set explode height. Explode height equals uh Oh JavaScript, how do you do this? Are you new are you random dot something or other? I forget how they do it. Hang on. Uh, as soon as I see the syntax, I'll know exactly what it is. Uh, we are making uh, perplexed. We are making a. Um, we're gonna make a little a, a from scratch. Uh, um, brain, do your thing. Uh, fireworks animation. That's the word. That's where it is, math random, and then uh, this generates... Okay, so for explanation for the C-sharp developers, yes, fireworks display, that's the right word. Uh, so um, 
when JavaScript creates a random number, it is between zero and one. It is a it is a fractional number between zero and one. So if you want to get a number that is larger, you need to take that and multiply it by the larger number in order to get something bigger. Uh, so uh, in our case, what we are going to do is uh, multiply by some amount. Now, when, when you're doing this to generate a number, usually what people will do is they'll take it and they'll do like a math.floor or something like that to chop off the decimal place. Uh, in our case, we don't really care because we're going to do a comparison of it like a less, you know, is, is less than kind of thing. So um, that's the concept we're going with here. So I don't need to floor it. Uh, and uh, welcome. Thank you for those follows, uh, both uh, L Coder and uh, Duck Dog. Thank you very much for the follows. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Duck Dog, it's your first time here. Uh, I'm glad you're loving the stream. Welcome. You're looking to get inspiration for side projects. Uh, well, we work on a lot of side projects here. Uh, we just try to do fun stuff. Uh, you're a CS grad with no specialization in regard to tech stack. That's fine. Uh, do you think it is important to focus on a specific niche or to be a generalist? I will say that there is room to be good in both. Uh, there is a case to be made for being uh, in a specific niche, knowing your, knowing your specialization and being very, very good at that. Um, that is absolutely a thing. If you are going to do that, make sure that whatever you specialize in is something that is both in demand now and will be in demand. And if it's something that is not going to be in demand, you're going to need to change that. Uh, being a generalist is also not bad. There are plenty of organizations that need people in those roles as well. Uh, so if you're going to go the route of a generalist, it is more likely that you would have to shift into some kind of a leadership role in some capacity if you're going to do that. If that is not appealing to you in the long run, specialization can help because then you are so good at a specific thing that only a fool would, would pull you into a leadership role unless you're leading a team that is specifically doing that uh, focus. Now, when I say generalist, I would mean that a web developer uh, is, you know, can still be a generalist. So you're probably going to be better at either like the front end stuff or the back end stuff or the database stuff. You're going to have something you're good at. Uh, the concept of a full stack developer people throw around, I would call that person a generalist. That being said, they're not the best at all of those things. A full stack developer is not someone that is fantastic at front end, back end, you know, database, whatever. It's someone that can do all of those and is probably best at one of them. So when when you talk about those concepts, that's that's what we mean. So if you're going to be a generalist, you're still going to have things that you're better at and things that you're worse at. So don't try to balance completely or you're practically unhirable at that point. But it is very nice from a team perspective if you're doing a lot of pair programming, for example, Let's say that you do have some front end people on your team and you're one of the back end people. If you can pair program with the front end people and work on their stuff with them and then take that, you know, and then they can work with you on the back end stuff, you both share a lot of knowledge of the areas that you are better at and it works great. And you both understood what the other one was doing and can still make suggestions, advice, things like that. It's it's fantastic. So uh, I I would say even if you do focus somewhere, keep your eyes on other stuff because it makes you very employable if you can work with everyone else. You're a half stack developer. Yeah, no, Schuster, that's totally fine too. Uh, it just means that you're not going to be, if, if for example, you're only front end or back end and you really can't work in the other stuff, it just means that you're probably not going to be pairing with them, but you can always just collaborate with people that know the other side. Uh, XDF Live, welcome. Thanks for that uh, follow, much appreciated. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Stool Penner, greetings and welcome. No problem about being late. Welcome to the stream and a good evening to you as well. And a good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever it is, wherever you are. Uh, welcome, everyone. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, so we're going to pick a random that is somewhere in the... So I want to have a range of some amount. Let's say that it is... 20% of the screen is, no, 40% of the screen is where it's going to explode. So we're going to multiply by, uh, so we're going to take 1080 times 0 0.4. That's going to get us the amount that we want. 
So this is going to get us a random number that is uh, the original CMG Chris Jones. Welcome. Uh, I, I still love your name. Thank you for that. Fo uh, thank you for that follow. Uh, Silas, I'm guessing Silas Ken and uh, Zen for one. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, greetings, Chris Jones. Glad, glad you made it. And uh, can't wait for you to get your original uh, name back. That'll be fun. Okay, so we're going to take this and then we're going to add 20% uh, of that. So we're going to do... Just to make these nice and obvious what is going on, we're going to do that. So... So we're going to take 20% and then we're going to add 40%. So we're going to take 40% of the screen state. We're going to choose a random spot somewhere in there that it's going to explode. Uh, yeah. Oh, I know exactly why. Uh, the reason why I wear glasses is because I like to see to see sharp. I wear glasses because I like to see sharp. Uh, Spirit of the War, the answer to your question is Java developers don't wear glasses because they don't see sharp. Ah, yeah. I actually do really like that joke. It's a funny one. Uh, okay, so we'll uh, so that'll be our explode height. So we're gonna say uh, it should explode if the Y is less than the explode height. Passing in the canvas. We don't need the canvas anymore. Because we told it at what height we were going to do that. So we're not even using the canvas in update anymore. Um, we used it when we created it. Yeah, we used it when we created it. So this is not that is canvas dot height, and this is canvas dot height. Yeah, I can type. I promise. I promise. I learned how to type, sort of. <laughs> okay. Um. Should explode. Explode. Okay. So I need to write what explode means. So explode means create new particles. Function explode. The weirdest language I have programmed in? Um, I don't know. Maybe. I guess it de depends on how you define weird. Um, Lisp is a weird one. I've programmed in Lisp a decent amount. It's been a long time, but um, it's a weird one. Okay, so update does that. How do we? How are we rendering right now? We are okay. So render is still wrong in this one. So this. So in rendering a firework, we're actually going to take the particles. And instead of a firework, we're going to make it particle. And then this one is not fireworks, that is particle style split. Um, Spice of Knife. Um, so when I created it, I created it as a function instead of a class uh, because I felt like it. Which I know is not a great answer. Uh, when I so when we started this, I kind of said uh, when I went to go create the object for our firework, I was like, "Well, there are like twenty ways we could do this. We could do it as a, as like a self-executing function that returns an object, uh, or we could do a full-blown like uh, you know class and go like all ES six on it." And I was kind of like, "Meh." It doesn't matter. So on our stream, we have done a variety of uh, vanilla JS stuff in the past. It's been quite a long time. And I think part of the reason why I probably leaned this way when we started this is because 
Um, I have been stuck in the back end space for like the past 10 months. So I'm even trying to. Uh, um, some of this is refresher for myself as well, because I've been out of JavaScript for so long. Um, <laughs> Uh, the specifically the code I've been working I've been working with teams that uh, are building uh, backend stuff mostly, and uh, I have been coordinating with people that are very front end focus. Uh, and yes, that is absolutely correct. We can easily refactor these in the future to be classes instead of functions. Uh, so we can absolutely do that. And if you want to see some of the stuff we've done with classes on this stream in the past, we have a whole archive of YouTube videos over on our YouTube channel. Because uh, I know that we did classes for all of our stuff when we were creating our Wasteful game. Uh, we called it Wasteful uh, for no no reason. It's like a zombie apocalypse little uh, uh, roguelike game that chat can run and it plays on the screen while your stream is going on. Um, it's kind of a weird game, but why not? Um, we had fun with it. We were moving sprites around and doing stuff. And... Uh, chat sent, used to send commands uh, it is currently turned off because we built it as a channel as a chat room game so twitch was planning on building chat rooms and we were like oh dude you could make like a super chatty game that was like you know all all kinds of text in 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 the chat room and it wouldn't flood your stream's main chat and then twitch was like oh no one used the room so we're getting rid of it and i was like oh okay bummer all right <laughs> Because the problem is, if people are giving commands through through chat to uh, play a game, it's going to be a lot of like, you know, move move right, move up, move right, move up, you know, and like attack and other things like that. It's like, yeah, okay, that just doesn't work. So it's fine. Uh, okay, so we adjusted this. So this renders the particles. Uh, so. When the particle is done, we remove the particle. So we're gonna update the position of the particles and then render them. The particles are gonna have their own velocity that they're going to adjust as they go. We're gonna render them. I think we don't splice them off. I think we indicate that the whole thing is done. So let's do this. Let done equal false it is so it starts off not done and then inside of update uh if it should explode it should explode um uh, we'll say is is done we're just gonna say done uh, let exploded equal false and then inside of explode we're gonna set that to true just so that we can track it for now so we're gonna say that it exploded um, when we render we're telling each particle to update so this um, Update doesn't happen anymore once it has exploded, right? Uh, or if, yeah, uh, if exploded. How long do we keep going on this? I'm almost thinking maybe it's a number of updates that we go through and then it's done. Um, uh, next project could be to make a Twitch extension for it so people don't have to flood the chat. Yes, Conk, uh, I'm planning on doing some Twitch extension-y stuff. Uh, and specifically, one of our next projects, um, because I think it's going to be cool, I want to build a Twitch extension... Uh, for Interactive 7. So rather than doing the chat... Like, 
So with a Twitch extension, for example, we could make the Twitch extension just play in the extension and not even need to be on the overlay. Although we could make the extension just be controls to be able to vote, for example, and then chat could vote on the direction that the character is going to move and what he's going to do. So, but yes, I do want to build Twitch extensions. I haven't done uh, them on stream yet. So if it exploded, what do we want to do? Uh, if we already exploded, we could start tracking time or, uh, well, you know what? Here, if it exploded, we're just going to return for now. We won't do anything. We won't do anything with this the update. We'll do nothing if it already exploded. It said fireworks update does not need to pass the canvas. We have already established. Uh, this will not need to update either because it will have its own. Uh, when it explodes, it needs to create the particles. So particles. Uh, let's just do this for now to do create particles. Uh, so we need to create the particles. Update. If it already exploded, we just return. So where do we determine that those are all done and get out of there? So if particles done, we remove it. Um, Okay, so I need an is done for that one. I don't have my is done for this yet. It is done if... Exploded and... Can I say not particles? <laughs> That's funny. That would be quite funny. Uh, yeah. Uh, am I that evil? I'm not that evil. Double equals, uh, it is exploded and the particle length is zero. So if we've removed all the particles, then it's done. Okay. So what do we need? We need init. We need update. We need is done, and we need render, and then that's the object, right? Those are our publics. Render, uh, explode is called internally, should explode is called internally, so it is just init and update, and we're not really rendering it yet. So we're saying render all of your particles, but then you need to render yourself as well. <clears throat> what do we want to draw? Like a two pixel rectangle? There's a fill rect. At X, Y. With a width of two and a height of two. Oh, uh, and then how do I do the color? How do I do the color? Somewhere I set the brush, right? Hang on. Uh, canvas, canvas fill rect uh, color. I should have made that one word. Fill style? Is that the one I want? Fill style? Yeah, that'll do. Except mine's called context. Uh, so fill style is going to be our color, right? Base color. It'll be the base color. So base color is that. And then in the 
a round pixel? What? You think I should? You think I should do an arc and make a circle instead of a? Uh... I'm just doing a little square. It's pixelated. Pixels are fun, dude. Come on, man. It's retro if you do pixels. Uh, you know what? Here. Four, four by four. Yeah, that's huge. Big and pixely thing. Actually, did it? Will it give me the intelligence? Uh, width. It's going up like a rocket. We could make it taller than than it like, than it is wide, I guess. Even though it's not going to be angled, I'm not going to bother with trying to make it actually look right. We're not going to, like, rotate the thing. If if I make velocity actually be an arc, we can figure that out and, and rotate it if we want to. Uh, but I'm not worried about it just yet. Okay, so we're going to fill the rectangle, display it like that. Uh, inside of fireworks, we are clearing the whole canvas and then doing an update of that and then rendering it. And if saying if it's done, we're going to remove it. Uh, and then in the particle, we need to make the particle. The particle is going to be very similar to the firework. Uh, we need to create the particles and their velocities. So what I could do is... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see when we actually run it, Schuster. If it if it actually needs to get adjusted in some way, alternately we could even do like we could even put a little image in there instead of drawing a rectangle. We could put a little rocket image and just draw that on the screen instead, and just have rockets that fly up and then explode. You know, like uh, so it actually looks like a firework. <clears throat> but uh, I'm I'm good with. Uh, we could we could draw circles if we need to. Um, so when we explode, we create the particles. Uh, nope, not an array length. Uh, we're gonna do I don't know. Eight particles are gonna come off of this thing. That's probably fine. We'll create eight little particles. Uh, so we'll push on particles. Uh, I don't know what particle looks like yet because I have not made it. So we'll push on this object. <clears throat> huh. Um, so that's how we're going to explode. Uh, Nothing set done. Is done. No, I don't set done. I got rid of that. I was originally going to make a done thing, but we're we're basing it on whether if there are no particles and it has exploded, that means there should be particles and there are not, so it is done. Okay. So the particles collection is going to then be what indicates that. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. I definitely get that. Um, couple of things that we're going to need to do inside of fireworks because we're going to create a firework in here i am going to need to import what's this do <gasps> thank you thingy uh slash js slash fireworks slash 
firework.js and what am I going to call it? Firework? Import firework from there? That should work. This one is going to need to know about the particles. So this is going to be slash JS slash particle. Uh, oops, fireworks. Particle.js. Particle. Particle. We're going like this. That's going to be capital on those. The type is going to be capital. <laughs> just just for my own sanity, uh, I think I'm going to go with capital on that so that I don't run into a problem there. Um, uh, hopefully that makes sense. Um, do I want to change how I did some of this? Uh, so I said that those were creating uh, someone. Uh, hey, <laughs> freak. Welcome. Thank you for that follow. Much appreciated. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Uh, factoring to ES6 modules. Um, maybe Desert Griffin. Maybe people were talking about it. So I could import those and just change them over. And that would not be that difficult. Uh, and it comes with some benefits. And I just have to start exporting them. Because I think in order to get it, I don't think I have to do the classes or anything. I think I just have... Uh, I think I can export it. But I guess I could export the whole... I guess I could export a class if I switch to it. Um, which, you're right, is definitely a question. I gotta think about how I want to do that. Um, because I think I just have to export them if I did that, right? But I can chop it. We'll we'll hold off. We'll hold off. Because you make a good point. I just looked at the clock, and I don't know that I've got time to do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. So fireworks, firework, uh, and then particle is going to be like a firework. Particle is going to be like a firework. It's going to have an init, it's going to have an update, it's going to have an is done, and it's going to have a render, right? Because we, we used is done on the particle. Yes, we used is done on the particle to determine if it was done. Uh, and is done is going to be just based on a number. So we're going to say if um, render count greater than, I don't know, how many times are we going to move this thing? Ten. We're going to have it barely move at all, and we're just going to write that in there for now, because I don't even know how often I'm calling this. So we're just going to fake it and just say ten. Render count is greater than ten. Okay, so that means in order for that to work, we're going to have to... We're going to say render count plus plus right at the beginning of that. Uh, it does not have a set of particles. It is just going to render itself. So it is just going to do this one. So we're just going to say context dot fill style is not base color they only have a color <clears throat> so this one is going to change from having two colors to just being color there we need we get rid of particle color we don't need it because this one's a little simpler it does not have a collection of particles it does not have a concept of exploding uh it does uh, it does have an x and a y which need to be initialized on it so it does not have a starting X and a starting Y. It is told those. It does not have an ex 
it has a render count, not that one. So there is no explode height on this. Uh, it does not take in the canvas, and it only takes in the color, which I already had there. Whoops. So that is its color. It does not need particle color. It does need the velocity. Um, render count is going to start at zero. Um, it needs its starting X and Y. And start Y. X equals start X and Y equals start Y. Okay, when it updates, it apply. Uh, it does not do this. Because when it is done, it is just done. We're not tracking it as a collection of particles. So when it is done, it should get removed and update will stop getting called. So we don't need to worry about that. So it is going to adjust its velocity and then it does not explode either. So it just does the velocity adjustment. And there's no concept of should explode on this one. There's no concept of exploding on this one. Whoops. It just does a render of its color, whether or not it's done and returns. So init update is done and render. Init update is done and render. Okay, so it is outputting that object, which should be enough for it to exist. Though, thinking about that that means that if I want to call firework elsewhere, firework is firework is that. Do I call it that way? Or was I smoking something when I created this? Was I smoking something? I think I might have been smoking something. Like, I should have made firework differently. Firework. Oh, whoops. Oh, no, not on this one. Yeah, I do need to rename this. You're right, you're right, you're right. I, I do need to do that regardless, because otherwise I'm really going to confuse myself. That's particle. See, I confused myself. What I meant was on this one, should I create this differently? Um... So I was trying to think of how I create these once I have it. So like in here, for example, um, when, when I actually want to use this, um, uh, I will actually need to think about that. Hmm. So if I do this, uh, I would essentially be saying like, so I think I would create that, but then inside of it, I need to actually make the object. So I think this is what I, so I think I set up fireworks the way I wanted to, but I did not set up firework and particle the way that I meant to. And I think that's the problem that I have, that I screwed that up. 
I should think about how I want that to work. Okay, um, either way. Uh, let's go ahead and do this and include them on the page so that I can actually try running this and I can think about how it's going to work. Uh, so I want fireworks to be on here. Is that not, can I not, can I not cheat like that? I can't, I can't just drag it on and have it like, have it do it for me. I actually have to type this myself. Wow. 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 It's going to make me write it myself. Uh, JS fireworks, uh, fireworks.js. So firework and particle. So particle needs to be on there because firework uses particle, fireworks uses firework. If I have them all loaded on the page separately, it should all work. And I don't think I need to then uh, include it because I'm not doing any, I'm not doing like, yes, uh, I'm not doing ES6 modules or anything like that. I'm just, they're just JavaScript. Uh, I haven't done this yet. Have not taken that plunge yet. So fireworks, if I set it up, I can then just say fireworks.init and then render. And then that will make it happen, essentially. That's like the trigger. So then on the page, uh, it is almost like I could just put in a click thing that just says, hey, yeah, when you click start it. Um, and it would run fireworks. So it exists as a thing. On this one, I kind of want to restructure. I'm thinking I instead want to go like this and say function uh, firework, firework, take in the color the particle color, the velocity, and canvas. And by the velocity, I, of course, meant that. Um, and then I could take these, put them up here. This dot, all of them. So that essentially becomes like the constructor of these. And then I could say for the methods, uh, uh, I could put the methods in here, can't I? I could say like this dot I don't need a knit anymore because I can do that up here. So I can say equals the color, equals the particle color, equals the velocity. Uh, do I need the canvas? I did it for calculating the explode height only. I don't think I need to save it. The particles is an empty collection. The X and the Y are fine as is. And then that function is replaced. Update needs to exist. And update is going to be this function. without anything in it, and it's going to have this code in it. Okay. So there's update. Uh, All right.
There we go. That makes sense. And I can extract methods if I need to on those. And then this needs a render as well. That's the update. Yep. Okay. I think I can get away with this. Needs context. Yep. There we go. And is done. This dot is done equals a function that will not get a name here, does not have parameters, and just returns this value. Uh, welcome, uh, SC Reap. Uh, welcome, thank you for that follow, much appreciated. Anyone else that's in here and enjoying the stream, be sure to click that follow button. It is the best way to get notified when we go live here on the channel. Okay, uh, so that changes how our firework works, I think. That ought to, that ought to make it work the way that I think it's going to work. Um, I think, uh, okay, so, uh, welcome, uh, <laughs> Ship Shoop. <laughs> I like the name. Uh, well, welcome to the stream, Ship Shoop. Okay, uh, so now inside of fireworks, we can say when we init we just start creating collections of fireworks that we're going to render and then remove. And then as long as we're just periodically adding them in, we should be fine. So when you init it, it should create some fireworks. New firework with the color of um, We're going to do red, just for now, with particle colors that are blue. For no, no specific reason, um, other than it's a good starting point. We should be randoming them in a little bit, too. Uh, the velocity needs to be an object with an X of something. Zero point five and a Y of something. So these need to be negative values. The X is going, so for now the X will be zero and the y will be negative one because I don't know how much to adjust on those and we'll have to figure that out and the canvas is going to be canvas for determining where it goes um, which I guess I'll just say the canvas and use the local variable because why not so we'll push a single firework on when this starts and just see what happens um, does the particle render anything yet? Uh, it fills a rectangle and indicate its count and it adjusts that. So now inside of Firework, when we explode, 
I need to create the particles, which if I do the same thing to particle that I did to firework and change it, uh, whoops, up here, function particle that takes in the color, the velocity, start X and start Y. Uh, welcome SKSS08, thanks for that follow, much appreciated. Welcome to the stream. And hey, <laughs> always drawing cards. Welcome, thank you much, very much for the uh, tier one sub. As two months, very nice. Glad, glad you've been enjoying the streams. Welcome, and don't worry, we will be making some more stuff. Uh, and and yes, uh, Schuster, I agree. Bar barring some debugging and fixing whatever's broken, uh, don't worry, we will be we will be killing Swoog later. Uh, so don't worry about that. <laughs> and greetings. Welcome. Uh, okay, so inside this function, uh, we need to do this, really, to start with, don't we? And anything that we didn't get down there. So these are... Whoops. Oh, that gets me every time in JavaScript, in uh, VS Code. Every single time. Uh, this dot render count equals render coconut count equals zero. And the other ones were already set. <laughs> Thanks, Janisku. Yep, a nice derp there. Uh, El Famoso, how old am I? Um, old enough that uh, I started programming in like mid 90s so like think like 95 or so um and yes schuster you are correct old enough uh i am i am old enough to have uh been uh paid to develop software for uh i don't know if, like somewhere between 15 and 20 years so old enough <laughs> Ma mature yes <laughs> Uh, I've been writing code for uh, like 25 years, of which uh, a good chunk of those I've been getting paid to do it. So, it's fun stuff. Uh, let's see. This dot update equals a function with uh, no name and no parameters, and it will do this code just like that and then that one is done and now we're going to make this dot render equal a function with no name and it's going to take in the context because we need the context we need the 2d drawing context of this canvas is specifically what we have to pass in here to make this work And then we need an is done function up here as well. So we're going to say this dot is done equals function with no name and no parameters. And it is just going to say return. Well, actually, it's going to say this. And I may have to do I have to this these? I don't remember if I have to. I'm going to find out really quickly if I'm missing the this is on all of these. Uh, uh, Windows 95. Oh, yeah, Windows 95 was the best. Um, I am old enough that my first computer, uh, had a, uh, a green screen and booted off of five and a quarter inch floppy disks. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I I remember the launch of Windows ninety five, uh, so so yes, I'm I'm old enough to uh, to have written some good code. Yes, five and a quarter inch floppy drives. Yeah, buddy. Um, what do I think of Mac OS? I think Mac OS is a good operating system. Uh, so people often wonder that because uh, being a Microsoft MVP and and really being in the Microsoft camp here, uh, they're like, oh yeah, you probably just don't like any of the other stuff. It's like, no, actually, I like uh, I like Linux. I like Mac. Um, I'm one of those crazy people that used to use Gen 2 Linux back in the day. Uh, I, uh, before I was really like a full-time software developer, I actually did, uh, server administration for 
uh, both uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac servers. Uh, I have also done tech support work when I was in school. Uh, I did tech support on Windows, Mac, and Linux PCs, uh, all of them. And so uh, whenever people comment to me, they're like, oh, the Macs just work. I'm like, mm, having worked tech support for them, I can tell you they break about as often. Uh, the problem is that the Mac, like, people don't think that because Microsoft was dumb and made the blue screen. And what did Apple do? Well, they did like, oh, we're going to have like this gray tint over it. And it's like, yeah, that's the same error, except that Microsoft made theirs like really obvious and annoying and like in your face and Apple didn't. So <laughs> it's one of those like, mm, it has the same error. It's just, it looks less scary when the Mac does it. So <laughs> yes. So some people like Mac because they made it, they made it look better. Uh, that being said, they they both they work differently. They do different stuff. They both have their same problems and advantages, and it comes down to preference at the end of the day. So um, I I did not switch over into the Microsoft and Windows camp until uh, I started working uh, at a company that used C sharp, um, and so that that's when I made the switch. Uh, Liz, thank you very much for that follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Oh yes, yes. There are there are some things on Windows that just don't work. <laughs> yes, Microsoft scared you to death, and Apple just dimmed the lights. That's that's about right, Derp Lord. That is about right. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and. So I think that piece works. I think this piece works. Uh, I know I'm missing a couple of really really big things that I'm going to have to do. So I'm creating new firework. Uh, did I create new particle here? I did not create the particle. Uh, so we're going to say um, push new. Uh, so you know what? Let's let's leave it as creating it out here. Just because I think it's going to look nicer. Uh, new particle. Uh, the color is going to be particle color. Velocity is going to be We're only gonna make one because uh, I don't want to. I don't want to build the whole thing yet. So it's going to be x, uh, an x of one and a y of zero. So it's just gonna it's gonna fly straight up and then just turn ninety degrees. Is in theory what we're gonna do, and its starting x is going to be the current uh x and the current y and now what i don't know is uh is uh there was nothing else okay what i can't remember is whether i need to this at this point i i admit i can't remember it uh current uh currency we are um we're not doing a full rendering framework we're just doing a simple thing uh vanilla js from scratch uh down to the bottom level uh, just making a basic firework animation. We're not going to finish it in this stream, sadly, because uh, I have a time limit I'm going to run into. Uh, but let's bring up the console and watch for errors. Okay, um, so fireworks should exist, right? Yep, it does. And did I ID my canvas or anything? I did not. Uh, okay, so a bunch of people freaked out, by the way, at the beginning of this. They're like, oh my god, inline styles, inline this. This is not the project this is going in. We're using a Scratch project to develop this piece. Uh, the f the fireworks animation stuff we're building, this is actually going to go into our chatbot. But in order to not be messing with the chatbot, because the chatbot is... look. The chatbot is the thing that responds to commands in the chat, so I don't want to be like stopping or starting with or messing with it while it's running. Uh, so it's going in that chatbot that has like, you know, chat commands and games and other stuff and is running. So in order to not be in that one, we're in a scratch project. And as soon as we're done building all the pieces, we're going to take these and just shove them into that project. So anything that I built as like, you know, an inline style or an inline script or something like that, it's going to go over there eventually. So no need to worry. Um, I could do a window on load function or something. 
Which I guess I could do in here. Which is horrible, but fine. Uh, window on load equals function with no name, no parameters, and yeah, Janiska, we haven't done the fireworks command yet. That's eventually what it's going to be. You're you're correct. Uh, so fireworks dot init. And what did init take? The canvas and the context. So id equals uh, my canvas. Uh, so I need to get it. So we're going to say documents dot get element by id. And it's going to be my canvas. And then the other thing that we need is the context. So does this work? Nope. Uh, so we'll call that canvas and context. And let's go ahead and make let canvas equals that. Whoops. And then let context equal canvas dot. It's, is it get context? Get 2D context. What is it? It's uh, I think it's get context. I think it's get context, but it's not showing it to me. Ah, yep, there it is. Yay, IntelliSense, woohoo! Okay, uh, so we're gonna say that, and then we're gonna call init, and then it's going to be fireworks.render uh, in a loop forever. That is not technically correct, because, like, we don't really want it rendering forever, but that's just going to go, like, stupid fast uh, if I do this. So, uh, I need some ways to do this uh, that are silly. I need to thread sleep that, because that's going to be just awful as it stands, right? Uh, exploded is not defined. There we go. Uh, so return exploded inside of this because it needs a this. This dot exploded and then these need to be this dot and this needs to be whoops this dot this dot this dot uh, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, uh, this dot. <laughs> uh, the context gets passed in this dot base color, this dot x, this dot y. I think those all need to be that. Uh, update. Wait, what, uh, why is not defined? Oh, yep. Why is not defined? 41 is where I left off. Uh, exploded. Particles. Now inside of particle, we have to do the same thing, and I have to say this dot, 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 this dot. I told you I couldn't remember if I needed to do that or not. And the answer was yes. Uh, so firework JS line 32. Missed it on this. Uh, what did it complain about? Particles is undefined. Oh, this has changed. Crap. Uh, okay. Well, 
Um, I guess we won't finish that part then. Uh, so I'd say we made it pretty far along on that. Um, I need to I need to adjust this because I missed this piece. Uh, I might do this before the next stream, fixing uh, all the thises and stuff, so we get rid of the compiler errors. Uh, let me get rid of that. We don't need it anymore because uh, I was confirming my own sanity there. Uh, where, where's the thing I was looking for? There it is. Okay. Um, so we will not get to see this actually run and make fireworks today, which is a bummer because I was hoping I actually make it do that today because today is July 4th for those of us. Um, you can't splice while I'm in a four each. That is a good point. I should do it when I'm outside of the four each. I should add it to a collection of IDs that I'm going to remove later. Uh, so I will do that. Uh, but yes, uh, that is the change I'm going to make is that I'm going to have to adjust how we remove those items from the collection, which I'll probably do afterwards. In fact, I could do a filter on that and basically do like a, for those of you that are familiar with uh, Link and, and uh um, th that same concept is in JavaScript as well, uh, of having these little methods that can deal with collections to do that. So I'll just remove the ones that are done, and we'll take them out of the collection so we can do an adjustment of the actual collection object. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I want to make sure that I wrap things up nicely, so uh, let me take a look uh, at who is online, if there is someone. Um... Either way, uh, I want to make sure that I mention a couple of things. So first off, if you are new here, welcome. Thank you for showing up and hanging out with us. Uh, what I do want to make sure that I remind all of you of is if you are new here, uh, feel free to ask questions. We are a wo welcoming community of uh, developers that are interested in all kinds of things on uh, related to programming. Uh, so programming and other technologies. So if you're interested in games, tech, any any hardware, software stuff, uh, feel free to bring it up and talk about it. We we like chatting about stuff, hence dev chatter. Uh, John, welcome. Thank you for the follow. And uh, like what John just did, if you haven't clicked the follow button, make sure that you do, as it is the best way to get notified of when our stream goes live. A uh, couple of things I want to mention. I... Uh, for about the past year, my streams had been cut down to about one a week, and I was mostly only doing this Saturday one. However, uh, my schedule has cleared specifically at the time that I like to do my streaming, which is in the middle of my day in Eastern time. And so uh, I will be bringing back my regular streaming times. So that's going to be on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. I'm planning to do streams. That does not mean I'm going to consistently do every one, which is why I recommend people follow, is that way you get a notification when it goes live. Um, but you can also follow our, you can join our Discord, which is a chat place where there are literally like 500 developers in there. Uh, it's not super chatty though, so uh, you can bring up topics of stuff that are interested outside of the stream. Uh, and uh, you can check out our code is usually on GitHub. This stuff won't be there yet because it's going to get added to our chat bot once it does, then it'll be there. Uh, and you can also see archives of our videos that go back two and a half years uh, over on our YouTube channel, as well as uh, I do put some videos up there that are for like specific topics that are not live streams, but are like edited, you know, scripted content as well. Uh, so feel free to check those out uh, as well. And links to Twitter and stuff. Um, we will be streaming again on Monday. I'll probably continue this just to wrap it up, but I also want to work on some of our other projects that we've been doing. So hopefully I will see you all on those. And uh, until next time, I want to roll our credits real fast. So thank you for hanging out with us today. Uh, I want to make sure that I thank uh, anybody that cheered. Our moderators, uh, SNB and Stoolpenner, for hanging out with us today. I want to make sure that I thank all of these wonderful people who decided to click the follow button today. So if you see your name up on that list, thank you very much. Uh, and if you haven't clicked the follow button yet, be sure to do so, as uh, there are an awesome group of people following this channel. And uh, we appreciate every one of them. Uh, isn't that nice, uh, <laughs> ADC? It's always nice to have a credit roll at the end. And I want to make sure that I thank... Swoog and ADC for those wonderful resubs to our channel. And now you too can enjoy wonderful Chatosaurus emotes all over Twitch. Uh, and uh, thank you everyone for hanging out today. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed our, our coding and a uh, bit of fun and discussions. We talked about all kinds of stuff. If you missed part of the beginning of the stream, by the way, it is all recorded and available in the video section on Twitch. 
And I will also, in a couple of days, uh, it will be on YouTube as well. I keep those at a lag because uh, Twitch does have, like, you know, they, they have exclusive rights to the content, you know, uh, streaming stuff. Some, I don't remember exactly what it is. Basically, uh, Twitch requires exclusivity for 24 hours, so uh, my videos will be at least a couple of days delayed every time. Uh, so you watched a long time ago. Uh, so thank you everyone for hanging out today. Happy coding. Uh, have a great rest of your day. If you're in the U.S., happy July 4th, Independence Day. And for the rest of the world, have a great rest of your weekend, a great Saturday, and I will hopefully see you on Monday. Happy coding, everyone, and take care.